want to talk today about why fools refuse to call upon the Lord for salvation. Uh, you'll excuse me here, I'm just doing some snowshoeing today. We're going to go to Romans chapter 3. We're going to see the reason here from the scriptures. Not from my opinions or my feelings or likes or interests or whatever else, but what the scriptures say. And if you have a King James Bible, you really need to turn there to see if what I'm preaching to you lines up with scripture. Romans chapter 3, beginning in verse 10, it says here, as it is written, Paul is referring to something in the Old Testament, in other words, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. How's that for sarcasm? With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. You'll see that with lost people. Lost people have a real hard time controlling their mouth. They curse a lot. And a real good way to tell if somebody's really saved is, did their mouth get cleaned up when they got saved? If the answer is no, then they're lost still. Verse 15, their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Interesting because evolution, you have atheists and they come out and they say, I believe in the theory of evolution. Okay, then you believe in the theory of destruction. Death and destruction is the means of advancement in evolution. The strongest survive. What does that mean? That means the weakest die. Destruction, misery. Verse 17, in the way of peace have they not known there is no fear of God before their eyes. Perfectly describes people that make professions of salvation and yet there's no change in their life. That's why they refuse to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. I mean, it's repulsive to somebody who's self-righteous uh, and wicked and sinful. It's repulsive to them to have to think of lowering themselves and calling to God and saying, God, please save me. Help me to be saved. They can't stand the thought of it. But we saw there in verse 10, as it is written. That means the scriptures have already talked about there being none righteous. What's it a reference to? Psalm 14. So go back there in your King James Bible. Psalm 14. Psalm 14, verses 1 through 5, says, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. That's what God thinks of you people out there. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord? Notice it's wicked people that call not upon the Lord. Very interesting. There's whole movements within a professing Christianity that says you shouldn't call upon the Lord for salvation. Why? Because they're wicked. Absolutely vile, wicked sinners. They have no problem with cursing. They have no problem with all the other ways of destruction and misery. They don't know peace. There were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. Very interesting. There were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. You need to have righteousness. All right? And uh, as a Christian, when you get saved, God's Holy Spirit will move into your life and will teach you the way of righteousness. It's called a changed life. Absolutely. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. You say, what's this thing about the fear of God? I'll show you about that. You say, oh, I believe in science. I believe in modern man and the marvels of modern science. I don't believe in anything so foolish as God. Really? The Bible says in Proverbs 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Notice that. What is wisdom? Well, there's a lot of different categories in wisdom, but well, you know one of the one of the best ones 
departing from evil, departing from sin, that makes you wise. You see some guy and he's hitting himself in the face with a hammer and you say, uh, what are you doing there? Oh, none of your business, don't judge me. You say, well, uh, friend, you probably ought to stop doing that. You're really bleeding kind of badly there. Maybe you ought to stop hitting yourself in the face with a hammer. Oh, it's all right, I'm fine. I'm, I come from a long line of, of hitting them, people that hit themselves in the face with a hammer, you know. Um, you ought to depart from that. You ought to stop. You say, what are you talking about? Drunkenness? Oh, uh, we just like to have a good time, just get boozed up a little bit. We like to get drunk now and then. Why? So that you can have car accidents, expensive bills, and all kinds of other problems, health problems, financial problems, all kinds of things. DUI arrest, go to prison for it. Really? Well, my dad did and my granddad, they all like to sit around and get a beer or two and, and you know, drink and drink and drink. You see? Oh, we don't like, uh, don't like the bonds of marriage, you know, we like to do some fornicating once in a while and you know, kind of get a little bit of prostitute action and things. Why? Hitting yourself in the face with a hammer feels good, does it? You see? You see, what will lead you to salvation is having a fear of God. That's what will lead you to salvation. But I'm going to show you one more verse of Scripture here. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2. But, you know, I just can't stand this religious stuff. I just don't like people forcing, cramming their beliefs down my throat. Why not? What's the problem? You don't want to quit your sinning. You like hitting yourself in the face with a hammer. You know what I mean? You like the bad relationships. You like the divorces. You like the drunkenness. You like the self-induced drugs and altered states of consciousness and all this other. You like that stuff, don't you? You like the Hollywood movies that mock God and, and blaspheme God, use His name in vain, use all kinds of profanity. You like that stuff, don't you? Wouldn't want to give it up. The righteousness of God is something that you're not interested in, is it? Proverbs 18, verse 2. Here's the best description of a fool. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. Hello, atheists. You know, if you were really an atheist, you'd really not even waste your time on religion at all. But you see, the reason atheists spend all their time talking about their studies and their research and their scientific studies, and all this, you know why they do it? Because your heart's trying to discover itself. You're trying to look for justification for your sin. You're trying to find problems and errors in this blessed book right here so that you don't feel any conviction anymore. You're trying to kill your conscience. And let me tell you something. You atheists out there, I know you watch my channel. Every time you watch one of these videos and you reject Jesus Christ again, you know what you're doing? You're hardening your heart. And let me tell you, there's a serious danger in that because it can get to a point where you harden your heart, you quench the spirit, you told God no enough times and the Lord just says, okay, you're done. And there are people that are like that. They just rejected Jesus Christ and rejected and rejected. I didn't say they don't want to go to church. You're smart if you don't want to do that, you know. I didn't say that. I didn't say you want to, don't want to wear a suit and tie on Sunday. That's not, that's not religion. That's not, you know, that's religion. Excuse me, that's man-made religion. It's not Bible-believing Christianity. I'm talking about you getting to a point where you can get down on your knees and you can say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. But you don't want to do it. And so you look up all kinds of excuses. Why? Because you're trying to discover what your heart is all about. Why is it that people say, give up Christianity, become an atheist? Why? What do they have to offer? So that you can live in sin without any conscience at all. Don't kid me. I know what it's all about. All right? So, I really, I, I, you know, some people, I mean, your, your heads are just so stinking thick, I really can't get through to a lot of you. But uh, if you're out there and you've, you've wondered about some of these things and, and whatever else, and, and you think, is there really a God? Why don't you ask? I mean, you know, most atheists I've ever met are city people. You start coming out here and you look at this and you say, all this happened by chance? There's got to be something there. There has to be something. There has to be somebody. And, you know, again, it's so funny because what atheists will do a lot of times, I've seen this. I've had people post links or, you know, hey, check this video out or whatever else. 
I've seen atheists, and they'll they'll take stuff from Protestant type uh, situations and sources. They'll take Catholic stuff. They'll take some Bible believing stuff, and they just blend it all together. And they say, "What a mess Christianity is! I reject Christianity." Well, it's because you're a fool. You see, a fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. You're just going, and you you have no Holy Spirit to guide you. You're saying, "I want all the truth of of." Christianity of the Bible, but I don't want to come to God and call upon Him to be saved. I'm not going to lower myself to get down on my knees like this and say, God, please save me. See, you don't want to do that. It's a, it's a little, little embarrassing for an enlightened man or woman in the 21st century to uh, have to lower themselves to actually get down on their knees or maybe even get down on their face and just cry and say, God, I'm sick and tired of this life. I'm sick and tired of sin. I've tried all that stuff. Fornication, sex, in other words. Uh, I've tried the drugs. I've tried the alcohol. I've tried the Hollywood movies and all the entertainment stuff. I'm tired of it. I don't want it anymore. So you got to lower yourself to get saved. You know, give up your self-righteousness. Repent. You know, you're not a good person. Turn from that self-righteousness. And turn to Jesus Christ as the only possible way that you can get into heaven. Call upon the Lord for salvation. I suggest you do it today. Right now.